Hello, my YouTube friends. Thanks for joining in tonight. Ah, oh, it feels so good to be here hanging out with you guys on a Sunday evening, man. We got some great content I want to go over today, and I hope you guys will join in and hang out a while with me, man. Ah, oh, man. You know, I've been seeing a lot of stuff on the internet, and, um, and it's like copyright-free music. And I'm thinking, okay, man, the only thing that's freaking free is a bad headache. And that's about it. A bad headache. That's the only thing that is free. And how can you have uh, free music to copyright? Because you know what? Somebody's going to have their sticky hands in it whenever you start making money off of it. Ah, that's right, man. When you start making money off of it, somebody's going to have their hand out. Guaranteed, guaranteed, guaranteed. There is nothing free or anything good. And um, so anyway, I wanted to share something with you. Um, you know, back in the day, back way back in the day, whenever I was recording music, it was, uh, we, we had to do things the hard way. <laughs> and I say that with all laughter, man, because uh, you could take one of these little things right here little bitty uh tape machine and uh push play record and get your guitar out or get your piano out or whatever move it move this close to your piano and sing a live track whether it didn't matter if it was just a scratch track or whatever it didn't have to be perfect but you could take one of these and hit play record in fact this still works by the way and um and record your music on this and you would send it off to the Library of Congress Copyright Office, and they would, um, you know, it would take sometimes, sometimes two months or so. I mean, I've even had uh, one time it took nearly three months for me to get my uh, music copyrighted. But there's just a bunch of uh, stuff that they have to do to make sure that it's um, that you are the owner and that you are the one, um, you know, that's sending in this music to be copyrighted. And so, um, I mean, I still have some stuff here, guys. I want to say this little tape machine works, and I'm going to be doing a video because uh, I had a subscriber write in and was asking me, does tape last longer than uh, CDs? So I'm going to be doing a video on that just simply because I'm going to tell you my thoughts about tape versus uh, digital. But this is a tape that I actually sent in for copyrights. And this was, uh, the name of the song was Forever Lonely. Hey, Steven, what's going on, man? That's the flat tape recorder. <laughs> That's the flat I started with when I was 14. Yeah, right on, man. Hey, look, man, this thing right here, this thing right here, dude, is it still works. Okay, man? And this was some stuff that I started copywriting my music on way back in the day. <laughs> And I've seen a video, I've seen, been seeing a bunch of videos out, man. They're talking about free music, uh, you know, um, to have the rights to free. There's nothing free, man. So I thought, well, you know what? I get on here, man, and do uh, the steps that people have to take to get their music copyrighted. You got to copyright your stuff, man, because uh, as soon as you start making money on it, somebody's going to have their hands out. But this is a tape that I've seen in way back. And you'd have to put your name on it and your address and your telephone number and whatnot. And so this was a song I copyrighted back in 19. Which, what year was this? Okay, this was 12-1-1995. I copyrighted the song. It's called Forever Lonely. And it still sounds good, man. I put it in there on that little tape machine. <laughs> And it still works. Now, they were just demos, you know, but I wanted to copyright my stuff. And you would send it in to the Library of Congress. And uh, like I say, I want to say it took about three months. Now, this is the latest thing that I copyrighted. These are uh, some songs. You'll get a little certificate here. And it's the, it's the real deal. I did this in 2018. They'll give you a number. You send in a list of your songs. And here's the thing about copyright stuff doesn't matter if you send in one song or you send in 30 songs. It's still the same price. So I did this in 2018, and I, I um, copyrighted Just Friends 
next to me again for the ride the lord is here uh for the love of god to find a way as one and i know you know so there's the list of the songs right there they'll send this to you a little certificate and it's good to copyright your stuff man you have to copyright your stuff you just have to because as soon as you start making money on it it's like anything else if somebody sees you making money on something they're going to want their hands out and they're going to say well where's my share so it's it's really imperative you guys to know that the only thing free out there is just a bad headache and if you don't copyright your music you will have a bad headache having to deal with infringement and hiring a lawyer and an attorney and doing all that other stuff because somebody else has taken your music and um expanded on it exploited on it and they're making money off of it <clears throat> steven you want to join in man <laughs> i can put you in you want to hang out with me a little bit <laughs> but uh anyway man i wanted to, i wanted to share that about copyright stuff because a lot of bands this is what they'll do they'll write the music and then um they'll actually the band to put it out there and if they don't have a publisher or they don't have anyone a manager or any, anybody like that uh to copyright their music what happens is a lot of times even the band members after the mo after the money starts rolling in uh, if one person did all the copywriting or was smart enough to do so and they're getting all the the rights to the music and whatnot they're making the most of the the change right they're making the most of the dinero and so uh what happens is a lot of times other band members uh they're like well, where's my cut man i had a you know didn't i have a say so in this too and um <clears throat> And uh, what happens, I'm sorry, I'm all tangled up, but what happens is there's there's a lot of resentment that happens, you know. The rest of the band members are going, hey, man, you know, we're part of the band too. How come you're getting all the money? And uh, here's the thing, man. A lot of the writers, the people who do the writing are the ones that really make the money. Everybody else just has to make their money by touring and promotion and things like that. So they're actually having to work and be slaves to the music to make the music back because by the time they go in the studio and pay off everybody in the studio for their time and the engineer and then all the other people that have their hands in it, you know, there's very little, there's very little uh, left over unless they're just making, selling, selling billions of records, you know? And so, um, you know, that was back in the day anyway. So, you know, here's the thing, man, so important, be smart, be smart. And copyright your tunes if you write a tune and you like the tune uh you know just you know court you can do it on a little video cassette tape and now you can send all your stuff uh by email so it's real easy to do uh it takes you about 15 minutes just to submit your songs you submit your stuff and um it's just a lot faster than than it was back in the day when i started copywriting music but um Here's the thing. Just get you a collage of songs. Just wait till you get at least 10 or whatever, and then uh, and then send them in, because I think the fee's like $50 now. Back when I started, it was it was real cheap. I want to say it was like 20 bucks, $20, and you could send in as much music as you wanted to, and uh, they would actually copyright it for you, and it'd take a couple months, and you get it back, and everything was kosher. But um, here's the thing, man. Um, don't... Um, Please, please, please don't put your music out there. Don't send your music out there unless you have it all copyrighted first because um, you just don't want to have to deal with, you know, hiring an attorney and having to deal with all that stuff when you could have just nipped it in the bud in the beginning. And uh, wait, wait, you got a few songs, man. Write you a few songs, you know, and uh, it don't have to be perfect. You just, it just uh, you know, just it could be, like I say, your guitar. Your rhythm guitar and your vocals on something like this right here it could be really easy uh but now you have your doll and everything to work with so you don't need this little thing <laughs> but dude i still got this from way back and you know surprisingly enough it still works it still sounds good uh it's got one speaker right here and uh, it actually still records man i really enjoy this i try to I, i've got stuff with you guys that uh, I don't know. I just I've hung on to a lot of stuff. In fact, I want to show you just a few of uh, my tapes. <laughs> so I was scrolling through. Um, I've got all these cassette tapes, right? 
I've got back from just when our band used to jam back in, um, I don't know, 87, you know, way back. And we would just put one of these babies in there, man, and uh, and just push play record and just to capture the band playing. I mean, I've got so many of these tapes, really, and they all work. They all work still. And that's why I want to do a video on uh, whether if I think tape is better than uh, CD. I am living proof of holding on this stuff and storing it up in these cases that you buy them in and just keeping them in a climate control room. And here's one I did, oh, way back in 87, man. Me and my best friend did this in his room. And, uh, <laughs> and I was listening to some of this stuff. It's funny. We had these uh, drum machines. I can't come on. Okay. Okay, right on. That's cool, man. Definitely. Yeah, man, we need to do a show, man. I'm, I'm ready, Steve. Whenever you're ready, I want to do it, man. I'm pumped up. You got me pumped up, man. I want to get in the studio with you, man, and uh, and just just start just start just going away on all the cool stuff that you're you're doing over there, man. You're doing some great stuff, and I love that show that you did the other night. Oh my gosh, man, so professional. You just you just I mean you hit it out of the park, dude. Very very professional. You're a very professional, dude. I like that about you. And uh, anyway, uh, straight to the point. You know, no, no BS and the real deal. You got it going on, man. So I want to do a show with you. So when you're ready, just, just let me know. And I'm glad you got the shirt today. <laughs> I was wondering if that thing was, you were going to get it, man. <laughs> I was like, man, surely it didn't get lost in the mail, but the mail has been running late lately. I don't know what the deal is with the mailman. But the mailman's been, uh, he's been, he's not been on his game. So I was kind of worried you didn't get the shirt. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, let me know when you want to do, do that show and uh, get those videos and whatnot and get that different angles where we can have it coming in and whatnot. Um, maybe you can get that going and whatnot and see that way uh, whenever we bring people in or whenever, you know, we do the show and we'll just be on top of um, we'll be on top of it. And everybody, the audio, by the way, the audio that was coming through, Stephen, was amazing on this end, man. I. I mean, I was hearing, I was listening to it through my headphones and I was hearing probably everything that you were hearing. It sounded great. And, uh, between the Valhalla, I don't know if I mentioned it on the tape or whatever. And between the, the, was it the lexicon that you were running it through? I think, uh, they both sounded terrific and amazing, but it probably, um, it probably depends on what type of band that you're, uh, recording as to what, what plug in or what you know piece you would use i don't know but i think if it was for me i would probably use the Valhalla on maybe like a band uh, an 80s top big rock band you know big drums and then if it was a modern day uh group i'd probably use the pcm the what was it the 60 you have i had the 90 so i'm not sure which one you had maybe the 60 but anyway um <clears throat> i would use that on a more modern group i don't know but that's just my thoughts but yeah let's do a show man but uh, I was showing everybody these old tapes, man. I still got all these old tapes. And they all work. And I've got about 90 of these down here. <laughs> all And they're all like demos of songs in our band playing live, just jamming, you know. Now here's what I really like to record on. It was the Maxell XL290. And if I could find a 60, this was the one that, this was the go-to. This was the go-to cassette tape to record on. They were the best back in the day. And uh, there's 90 minutes of recording right here, babe. It really, it's the good stuff, man. And they sound great. Now, I have an old tape machine by Tascam down here. It's a Tascam 12 MK2. It still fires up and powers up, but uh, something, something on the, something went wrong. I'd like to fix it, man, so that I can play all my tapes on a little better unit than this one right here. And so, if you guys know anybody that I can get that uh, task cam fixed, a place where I can get it fixed, I'd like to get it fixed. It may just be a a, a roller, a pinch work roller, or something in it that's not turning. I don't know, man. I can't figure it out. But it powers up fine. And here's the thing. I didn't power it up for a long time. And then it just seemed like it stopped working. I don't know. But I'd like to get it fixed so I can play all my tapes, man. I got tons of these tapes, demo tapes. 
But um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to be doing a video on um, on what I think tape is better than um, CD. And uh, and I, I, I'm just going to tell you right now, I think tape's better. If you store it up right, it, it, uh, it's the real deal and it lasts forever. I've got CDs that I've ordered on Amazon um, just recently and played them just a few times in my tape deck and my CD player in my car. And uh, you can look on it. You can look on the CD and you can actually see the blemishes that start. And I've never even take, uh, taken the CD out of the unit. Like I just jam on it for a couple of weeks and leave it in there and then uh, pull it out. And you can actually see blemishes start and it would skip. It skipped. So these tapes don't skip, man. And I've had these tapes forever for 34 years. So, and they still sound good. So there you go, man. But I am going to be doing a video on that because I had a, I had a subscriber write in, Steve, and he was asking me my thought of what I thought was better, analog tape or CD, digital. So uh, anyway, I'm going to uh, I'm going to stir the pot on that deal because <laughs> everybody's got their different beliefs on what they like. But look, man, hey, this is this is the real deal. This is 30 something years old, man. And it still plays fine in here in these little in this little tape deck you know, so, uh, go figure, you know, but anyway, uh, a lot of good stuff, you guys out there, man, I do want to say and reiterate a thousand times, man, please, please copyright your music, there's nothing free that's good, and so whatever you're seeing on the internet, free music, uh, you know, um, there's really nothing free, man, so here's the thing with that, you probably dabble into that and get something started with it, and then, uh, and then have to, you know, take a shot, you know, have to take a shot from it and a hit. And somebody's going to want to, um, you know, I don't know, have legal rights against you or whatever. So anyway, don't do that, man. And uh, get your music copyrighted. It's really, really easy to do. And you'll get one of these certificates back when it, when you're done with it. And uh, it's a legit thing. It's really easy to do. And I highly suggest, um, you know sending your tunes in man it's a really cool thing it's a really cool thing and it's kind of a neat thing too when you get this in the mail and you find and you get it in you go ah oh, now my music's copyrighted and now i can you know it doesn't matter who i send it to what engineer i want to work on it or my tunes or whatever you know i know that i'm okay and here's the thing man when your music's copyrighted um you know you can send it out to anyone you want to send it out to and to uh, um, any studio you want to, and you can let them know, hey, all my music copyrighted, and uh, you know, is it if I send you my tunes to work on, and but do I need to pay you up front, or how does that work, you know? But it doesn't matter because here's the thing, man, your music's copyrighted and you're protected, and they can't, they can't, um, they don't want to have to deal with infringement rights, just as you don't. So, uh, copyright your stuff. It's really, really, really cool. And now uh, I'm not sure about this new thing, the blockchain that's coming out. The blockchain that's coming out is a way once you put your um, stuff in there in the blockchain, it's there forever and no one can take it down. So you can build your own website on the blockchain. You can, um, no one can take it down. You can put whatever you want to, that you want to on it and it's, um, and no one can take it down. It's there forever. The only person that can take it down is you. So check into the blockchain stuff. It's an it's a new thing that's out, and uh, it's going to be probably the next uh, next way that we do a lot of things as far as how we um, how we um, you know move money and all kind of things, man. So uh, check it out. It's called the blockchain, man. Uh, do your research on it, but it may be the way that we're going to um, our future is headed in the blockchain. And uh, so you can do photos, photo library, uh, you know, all kind of stuff, man. You can do, um, uh, you can even have people send Bitcoin. And so, so you remember when the dot com came out, it was like www something something dot com. Okay. Well, the blockchain is like that too, except, um, you know, you can own these addresses basically. And, uh, and once you own them, they're, they're rightfully yours and uh, until you sell them. And so, um, check it out, man. It may be, it may be something you want to look into, man. Uh, especially with your music and all other kind of stuff, man. You put your music in there and it might be, uh, it might be a legit thing to do, uh, copywriting without having to send in 
to the Library of Congress? I don't know, um, but it may be something that you can do the research on and find out for yourself. But all I know is this is the real legit way of the way it's been in the past is um, you send your music in to, um, to um, the Library of Congress right here, and they will copyright your music, and, um, and it's a legit thing. You're good to go after that. Thank you guys for joining in tonight. As always, we appreciate you here on the Audio Master Show. I hope this video helps you out. And do not, um, try not, and we will not uh, put our music out there unless we have copyrighted our music. And that way we don't have to worry about infringement rights and all that other good stuff. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show. Hit that subscribe button right down there. And slam that bell, and we will see you tomorrow.